Praise the Lord, good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this morning to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, beloved and friends, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. It's not awesome. It's not great. It's not mighty, my friends, in Jesus' name. Welcome this morning. Those of you watching me this morning from your living room, from your dining room, from your kitchen, from your car, from your office, on the street with your phone, even in church this morning before service, or even right here this morning, God bless you richly. There is a tremendous blessing in store for you this morning. Those of you watching me this morning, if you're sick, whatever area you're sick, physically, spiritually, socially, materially, financially, educationally, whatever area you're sick in this morning, I'm here to tell you that God will touch you and heal you and set you free because the God we are serving is still in the healing business. Jesus said in his words, healing is the children pray. And the first covenant he lived with man was a covenant of healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I am healed, you are healed, we are healed this morning in the awesome name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My friends, if you're sick this morning, if you have cancer, you have AIDS, you have COVID, you have diabetes, you have a heart problem, a liver problem, a kidney problem, whatever case you have, if you have a dialysis problem this morning, whatever case you have this morning, if you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb this morning, if you if you have a broken arm, broken rib, a broken leg, if you're depressed, oppressed, frustrated, if you're suffering from anxiety, I'm here to tell you that God will touch you and heal you and set you free if you have a financial uh, oppression this morning. If you have a financial bondage, if you have a financial depression this morning, my friends, I'm here to tell you that God will break every curse against your finances this morning in Jesus' name. If you, you have every generational curse will be, break, will be broken this morning in Jesus' name. Every blight in your life will be break this morning in Jesus' name. I pray God and I set you free from every financial bondage this morning. I pray that God will bless your marriage. Bless your home, bless your children, bless your business. You will, you, will have, you will have great success and prosperity. God will bless you up on the job. You will get a promotion on the job in the mighty name of Jesus. You will get favor from God and man in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This morning, my friends and beloved, right now I feel a tremendous anointing in this place. And I pray this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit and the send for that anointing. Yesterday morning, I forgot to send for that anointing in your living room, but I'm going to send for that anointing this morning. And break every chain, break every barrier, break every fetter, break every evil, and break every work of darkness, every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil. I command to go right now in the name of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus repent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. Right now, are you ready to receive that anointing? Hallelujah. Right now, are you prepared? All you need a little faith. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to the mountains, Be thou removed and cast henceforth into the sea. And if you obey you this morning, all you need a little faith in God to receive your miracle, my friends. Because God is not only the healer of our soul, He is the healer of our body. He said in His words, He was wounded for our transgressions, He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His strength. We are healed this morning in Jesus' name. Right now, are you ready? Are you ready for that anointing? Are you ready for the, to, to receive your miracle from the hands of God? Right now, in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free with the power of the Holy Spirit. I see the Spirit realm this morning. Many are healed. Many are saved. Many are delivered. Many are set free from all manner of sickness and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and any work of darkness. Many of you who are demon possessed are free this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. My friends, if you don't, are not sleeping, you will have good sweet rest and sleeping at night. My friends, God is awesome. God is great and God is wonderful. Write me, text me, call me and let me know what God has done for you, my friends. Hallelujah. He's awesome, great and mighty. In the name of Jesus, my friends, this morning, I'm here to tell you, I want to speak a little. Hallelujah. That God will use God will use someone to provide for you. 
and when he really and when he re, he is ready to change your situation he can do it when he is ready to change your situation he can do it my friends uh, suddenly he can do it suddenly immediately he can do it uh, out of nowhere where that comes from my friends uh, and wow bam boom hallelujah he can do it he can do it that the god will come so don't get set up that you can't you don't see anything because you're in a dark dungeon because god is doing something over there god is doing something over there that you don't know the first thing about until it's time for god to create my friends i hook up my friend shikan amasan toda babayande let's give the lord a big hand Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are your strength and your There is nothing too hard for you to do. You see that when we tie, we try to explain to all of us doing this, uh, my, my friends, this morning. Hallelujah. That's uh, on your way to your destiny. You're on your way to your destiny. There will be detours, my friends. There will be detours. There will be places, my friends, you don't plan to go. Hallelujah. There's places, people you never plan to meet in your life. Hallelujah. Situations you never thought will be in. In, in my friends, you will be in. Even mistakes you have never thought you will make, my friends. Predicaments that you never thought, my friends, will be your problem this morning hallelujah but my friends and beloved i'm here to tell you it will be all 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 be allowed for a sovereign provincial god hallelujah my friends and beloved is it awesome as long as you and i choose to live in a, in a live with a small god my friends the circumstances of life will will dictate to us will dictate to us my friends but the moment you expand you expand the meaning of god to this my friends all encompassing sovereign person my friends and beloved when nothing gets to you unless it pleases you it passes through the fingers the fingers first my friends then all of a sudden all of a sudden my friends hallelujah you may not like my friends the prison the pit my friends the problem hallelujah the predicament my the predicament, predicaments my friends that you're in but because you are attached to him to god's sovereign plan this morning because you understand there is a blueprint in heaven with your name on it hallelujah praise god she santo de and it all it all designed my friends and beloved it is all designed to bring you, to bring you to your destiny, to bring you to your destiny this morning. Are you ready for your destiny? Every believer, every Christian has a divine design, a divine design for your life. Are you hearing me, my friends? It may be a little foggy right now. May now maybe a little not too clear. It may have been totally manifested for many number of reasons my friends this morning but uh, nevertheless nevertheless my friends and beloved you have one and you don't leave but uh, you will not leave out uh, without without my friends listen to me really my friends really let's take it again hallelujah really my friends listen to me this morning Do, does god take you from where you are to where he wants you to be in in, in a straight line no, my friends, why? Why does he need to take you in a straight line? Why on your route to your destiny, design purpose for being your destiny, my friends? God, does God bounce you around? Why does God bounce you around all over the place? Sometimes good times, bad times, ugly, ugly, ugly times, my friends. Ugly, number one. Number one this morning, if it, 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 it to develop your character, to develop your character, he wants to make you a better person, and he never does that without tests, without tests, my friends, without tests. Tests are adverse circumstances that God causes 
to allow in order to develop us, my friend, to spiritually, to develop us spiritually in a, in, in a test and nobody gets from we from 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 them, my friends. So you so so how long you do you have to be in this test? How how you pass this test this morning? Hallelujah. Because because God believe in testing. God believe in testing, my friends. But there is a second reason for the deterrence this morning. Hallelujah. It is a, this is the reason of our message today, my friends. Hallelujah. That God, that God, my friends, allow deters. God allow deters on this, this road to destiny. He allows it on this road to destiny in order to prepare, prepare, my friends. Hallelujah. Those who he wants, those who he wants, my friends, you to impact. Did you get that this morning? When you arrive at your destiny, my friends and beloved, let, let me say it in another way this morning. Let me say it in another way. Destiny, my friends, destiny always involves. Destiny always involves your benefiting others beyond yourself. Did you get that? Let me say it that again. Your destiny is only about you. Hallelujah. It's not only about you. And so if it's all about you, my friends, and nobody but you, hallelujah, listen to me, the only three person on planet on earth is me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. You're not yet arrived at your destiny. Or even if you arrive at it, my friends, you would know it because your destiny, your destiny is never, is never only, my friends, about, about you. Hallelujah. Look at chapter 50 this morning. My friends and beloved, let's go to the scripture. Let's see the scripture. I'm looking at this morning a summary chapter we use for this whole series. This series, my friends, he says, it is, it is in verse 19, but Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I am in God's place. And in God's place, as for you, you meant it for evil against me, is that so? But God meant it for good, my friends, in order to bring about this present result. And watch this this morning. To preserve many people alive. To preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide. I will provide. <coughs> there's a, there's other word. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. He says, God brought me here to provide for you. To feed you. Have you to not you because your destiny is never your destiny is never only about you your destiny is never only about you he is carrying you he's carrying you to your destiny hallelujah and for you not only to be blessed but for you to be a blessing for you to be a blessing my friends and beloved did you get that we explained many times the definition of a blessing my friends hallelujah because most people so far too many people are not are only getting half the definition half the definition that God wants to do something for them not necessarily to do something through them hallelujah a blessing my friends is experiencing enjoying and extending extending the goodness of God in your life hallelujah praise God so if you if your blessing start with you it won't be, be that long. It won't be that long because God is looking for con 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 condolence, not just uh, my friends, and He's looking for places that He can work through, not just play people He can come to. Hallelujah. Did you get that this morning? Shikanama Santa Rabende, your destiny involves you, my friends. Your destiny involves you, and they get the gifting, the calling, the purpose God has given you, but He wants you to understand it's not only about you, it's not only about. 
about you because you are citizens of another country, of, of another kingdom. If you will, your president, you represent another king and he wants his hand and play. He wants his hand and play. Are you hearing me? He wants you to know you're part of something bigger, something bigger this morning. You and you don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not hating. I know that, my friends, you want God to do something to you, for you and in you, and you want God to bless you in a certain way. Is that so? You want Him to change something in your life, better something in your life, and provide something in your life, reverse something in your life. I know you need God for you, Hallelujah. But, uh, but uh, your destiny cannot only be for you. Did you get that this morning? He says, my friends, God brought me out. Oh, God brought me to this place. God brought me to this place to provide for you, to provide for you, to nurture you. In other words, he has somebody else in mind when, when he was bringing me my destiny. So there is how it works. There is how it works. Somebody is there to deliver you from what you're going through. There are two reasons why you can, can delete your destiny. Someone is being oppressed and keeping down for many years. Where God wants to take you, my friends. One reason is you have passed the test. You have passed the test. You keep feeling the test, my friends. So God can move you to the new grade because you haven't passed the test from the previous grade. So you keep feeling the test. So He has to keep you retesting so that that can delay your destiny. Hallelujah, my friends. Are you so selfish? You're so selfish. I'm so selfish. We're so self-centered this morning that he can't use us to be a benefit to someone other than us. I, I, I'm getting hard this morning. Hallelujah. And if he can't work through you because you only want him to work to you, that you, you can delay the arrival of your destiny, my friends. Hallelujah. My friends and brethren and beloved this morning. James chapter 1 says, True religion manifests itself. True religion manifests itself in ministry to others. Did you get that this morning? True religion manifests itself in ministry to others. Now, my friends, let me tell you. Now, my friends, you have to understand this morning. You have to understand God is always doing more than one thing at a time. He is always doing more than one thing at a time that involves you this morning, involves you. But because it's not only about you, and because it's not only about you, He is manipulating different things in different places, but at different times. Hallelujah. Until it's time for, for the hookups. Are you following me? He is doing something over there that you don't know anything about, my friends and beloved. All you know is that you're dealing with right now, my friends. Hallelujah. Torn in chapter 41 this morning. Let's look back and come to look forward again. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. <coughs> I get wet in the rain. And lots of rain during the past couple of weeks in the past couple of weeks, my friends. Uh, let's get back to chapter 40 and 31. Remember the Bible, there was no chapter written. We added chapters in order to be able to find things quickly. Is that so? So you can kind of just read straight through particularly the stories about the Bible. In verse 23 of chapter 4, it says, Yet the chief cupbearer, yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, Joseph, but forget him. He forget him. Here Joseph is in prison. He interprets the cup bear and tree. He tells the, 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 the he tells him, remember me to fear. But the cup bearer forgets him. Have you ever been in a situation? We would look like God was answering your prayer and the reverse happened. You thought you had an answer. You thought you had an answer and the exact opposite to the answer occurred and you want to know what God, why, why you want to me to do me like this. When God disappoints you, my friends, when God disappoints you, it's on purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hate to tell you that. I hate to tell you that, my friends, but when God disappoints you, 
He disappoints you on purpose. Hallelujah. That's an important point for this morning. He says, the cup bearer forget him. The cup bearer forgive him. After he had seen the, 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 the cup bearer for his life through interpreting his dream. My friends and beloved, how long was he forgotten because he's in prison? Oh, by the way, he is not only in prison. It says he is in the dungeon. You know what's a dungeon? The dungeon was, my friends, the hole underneath, the hole underneath the prison. He is not at the bottom, of, but, he, but he's under the bottom. He's under the bottom, the dark, dirty place we call the dungeon. The respective location called the dungeon, and he's there for having done nothing wrong. Has it happened to you? So he is an innocent person. He is an innocent person in a bad situation that God allowed. God allowed, my friends. You may be asking the question. I don't know why God allowed this. It's not fear. Oh, it's not right. It's taking too long. It's taking too long. And that's that's his situation. Verse one of chapter forty-one tells us, my friends and beloved. Now I come about the end of two full years. And that Pharaoh had three, and behold, my friends, he was standing by the night. So you and I will go into the details. But Pharaoh had a nightmare, and my friends, he had a nightmare. He got this dream that literally, literally terrorizes him. The dream terrorizes him. He can't understand it. So Pharaoh calls the professionals. To interpret the dream. Verse 8 tells us, I am going back this morning. I went through yesterday. Now in the morning, the spirit was troubled. So he bent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and in the wise men and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was not one who could interpret them. Hallelujah. So to Pharaoh, okay, stick with me now, my friends. I have a great point. Joseph is languishing in a prison. He in the lowest part of the prison called the dungeon. In the dungeon, Joseph was in the dungeon. Pharaoh, who doesn't even know who, who Joseph is, has a dream. He has a dream that kept him up all night and troubles him. And he calls the paid professionals. He called the paid professionals to help him figure out his nightmare. And the paid professionals can't figure out his nightmare, my friends. Hallelujah. Joseph doesn't know Pharaoh. He doesn't know Pharaoh. Doesn't know Joseph. My friends, the cup bearer knows them both. Hallelujah. Because the cup bearer was in prison with Joseph and he worked for Pharaoh. Hallelujah. My friends, I follow me. What happened, my friends? Hallelujah. Verse 9 then, the chief cup bearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I will make a Mention today of my own offense, hero. For fears of all his servants, he put me in, in confinement in the house of the captain of bodyguard, both me and the chief bearer. We had a dream the same night, and he and each one of us dream according to the interpretation of his own dream. But verse 12, now my, my friends and beloved, a Hebrew youth was there, a Hebrew youth was there, a servant of the captain of the bodyguard, and we related to him, and he interpreted our dream to each one. He interpret according to his own dream, and just as he interpret for us, my, my friends and beloved, it was happened. He restored me to my office, but he hanged the other person. And all of a sudden, the cup bearer memory came back to him. Shikara Masante is not awesome, my friends. Wait a minute, fear had a dream, and but you couldn't interpret and scared to death. Two years ago, I had a dream, scared to death. And there was this Jewish kid, there was this Jewish kid in jail who interpreted my dream. And it came about just as, as it happened. It came about just as it happened. And when does the cup bearer remember? When does the cup bearer remember? Joseph, because remember we read, he forgotten him. He remember it when it was God's time, when it was God's time for a hookup to a court. Give a lot of people. <laughs> Over there, my friends, God created a nightmare over here while Joseph is in prison over there. Hallelujah. There yeah, you follow me. He doesn't allow, he doesn't allow the negative events of Joseph to change, to change until the nightmare occurs over there. 
Hallelujah. He brings to remembrance. You see, God knows how to. To, to stop the bring back stuff up in people's mind he brings back the cup bearer mind but joseph my friends and watch this because i want to make a big point a big point a big point it says in verse 40 then pharaoh then pharaoh sent and called for joseph and they inherently brought him out of the dungeon where he had shaved himself my friends changed his clothes and be and came to pharaoh are you following this morning? And now here's what I want you to know. Don't miss this, my friends. Don't miss this this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joseph had absolutely no idea. He had no idea about the dream. And had never met Pharaoh in his life. He doesn't know what's going on there in the hole. All by himself. He is there in the dungeon all by himself. My friends and beloved. But in less than 24 hours. In less than 24 hours. The world changes. His world changes in 24 hours. He is released from prison. He is released from prison in 24 hours. Hallelujah. He is given a shave. Hallelujah. In 24 hours. My friends, he was given a shave. He got his clothes changed. He gets brand new clothes. Let me show you what else happened in 24 hours. Hallelujah. In 24 hours because it's going to go somewhere with this. 2041 tells us, my friends, after he interprets the king's dream. Verse 41 of chapter 41 tells us, Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And then Pharaoh took off his signet ring, his signet ring, he took off his signet ring and put it on the hands of Joseph and he clothed him in garment of fine linen and put the gold necklace around his neck. Hallelujah. My friends, it says, and when he had brought him on the second char chariot verse 43 and they proclaimed before him bow the knee and he set it over over all the land of Egypt all happened in 24 hours and this this happened in 24 hours my friends you see God is awesome okay let's re review because uh, let me tell you saying something is going you're going this my friends uh, somewhere he is in jail He's in jail. He's forgotten in jail. He was forgotten in jail. He's in the lowest part of the jail. He is at the bottom. He is at the bottom. He doesn't know fear. He doesn't know about the dream. He doesn't know about anything. All he knows is that the copper bearer who helped forget him. He had forgot him. Hallelujah. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, somebody came, come open the cell door, cell door doors, and say, There's a, a, a gillet razor blade, razor shave, shave, here are some nice clothes here, change, take a bat, take a bat, you're going before him. You go, we need you, 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 we need your gifting. We need your gifting. We need what God giving you because the professionals can do it. The professionals can do it. The professionals can do it. So he, he, he took his gift that he's only got to use in jail. Are you following me? This is heavy. He took the gift that he used in jail. Hallelujah. And now he's using it at the, the White House. He interprets Pharaoh's dream. Hallelujah. He interprets Pharaoh's dream. And what does Pharaoh do? What does Pharaoh do? Give him a signet ring. Put a gold chain around his neck. Hallelujah. My friends, give him his own wardrobe. Give him his own limousine service, a chariot. In those days, that's the limousine service. And make him second in command. And now everybody in Egypt. Everybody in Egypt is bowing their knee before him to Joseph, my friends. Hallelujah. This is heavy. And this is in 24 hours. All this happened in 24 hours. Now, why I'm telling you that, my friends, I'm telling you to let you know, hallelujah, that when God is ready to move, when God is ready to move, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. And when he's ready to change your situation, if he can't do it, my friends, suddenly he can do it suddenly suddenly immediately out of nowhere where that comes from hallelujah let's give a lot of
so weird that God will come. Uh, so don't get upset this morning that you can't see anything because you're in the dark dungeon. Hallelujah. Because God is doing something over there that you, you don't know the first thing about until it's time, until it's time for God to create a hookup. A hookup, my friends. Hallelujah. Now listen to me this morning. My friends and beloved, because that's not the point of the sermon. But you see, my friends, this morning, this Sunday morning, you need to know that the part of the sermon, the Sunday morning, hallelujah, because you, my friends, Joseph, got a, a bling now. He got bling. Joseph is a man now. Hallelujah. He is a man. He is living large. He is living large. And now Joseph has been a blessed. Joseph has been blessed with stuff, with stuff, my friends, having used his gifting, having used his gifting, he's been blessed with stuff, and now he is, is out of the pit and in, in the palace, in the palace, in the White House. The problem today is most people are satisfied with the definition of blessing. And get more stuff, better job, more money, better cover, nicer clothes, nicer house, nicer house, my friends and beloved. Remember, your blessing includes you. Your blessing includes you. It's not only about you. But look at chapter 45 this morning. Hallelujah. The story continues, my friends. It continues this morning. Hallelujah. He is now with his brothers. He is, he is forgotten his brothers. His brothers, and remember what forgiveness is easy when you know God is using it. Forgiveness is easy when you know God is using it. And hear what he says to his brothers. Who are you have now faced with, faced with Joseph who now over them. Over verse 5 of chapter 45. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourself. Because you sold me here for God sent me here before you to preserve your life. Hallelujah. Well, watch this now, my friends. Hallelujah. You sold me. You sold me while you were selling. Selling God was sending. While you were selling, God was sending. You see that you were selling me and God was sending me. Is that heavy? You thought you were getting rid of me and God was preparing to use me and you thought you were messing over me and you were doing you, you, you were doing me a blessing, me, my friends, if you would have known, if you would have known that the brother was going to wind up being the provider. They will have never sold him, but God let them sell them, hallelujah, so that God could send them. He said that God, God could send them in order to preserve them, hallelujah. And he says, God did this to preserve, to preserve life. Verse 6 tells us, is heavy, but for my friends, for the family has been in the land for two years. And there was still five years in which we will, will neither be plowing or harvesting. Here is, uh, is good, my friends, God sent me before you to preserve you, to preserve you a remnant on, in the earth and to keep you alive, keep you alive by a great, by a great hallelujah, by a great deliverance, by a great deliverance. And it goes on to say in verse 11, there I will provide, I will provide for you, for there you are still, there are still five years of famine and to come and you and your household and all you have will have been in profession. Guess what the, the man says, he said, he didn't just send me here to live in a big house. He sent me here to preserve you. He sent me here to preserve you. He sent me here to benefit somebody other than myself. So there you, here it is, my friends. Here it is. When God blesses you spiritually, when God blesses you spiritually, that's the most important blessing. When He bless you materially, when He bless you circumstantially, my friend, when He bless you influentially, and when He change your status in life, He removes you from that. That negative situation, my friends, keep your eye open, keep your eye open for the blessing. He wants you to be hallelujah, praise God, and that's that's the blessing that you have this morning because the shortest way to 
cut, my friends, the cut short your destiny, my friends, is to only be thinking about you. And the reason that God bless you is which is always to be a blessing to somebody. Beyond you, my friends, beyond you this morning, beyond you. Hallelujah. Uh, this, the crisis of Pharaoh, the crisis, my friends, in the culture. And by, by the way, my friends, Egypt is not a Christian nation. Pharaoh is not a Christian man. This is important. He is, a, he is, a, he is, he is not a believer in a secular world. He is a believer in a secular world, in a secular society. So all of you who are working for non-Christians this morning, and you're working for pagans, people who don't know God, God knows how to send nightmares. Are you getting me? He, God knows how to create opportunities in a secular environment. Hallelujah. In a secular environment to send for God people. You'll find out, my friends, the first summer that was the key to Joseph's life. He doesn't apologize. He doesn't apologize for his faith, but just because he was in a secular environment. See, he didn't, he didn't hide his Christianity. He didn't hide in Christianity in order to be accepted by Pharaoh. Hallelujah. We got to be, we got too many secret uh, agent Christians and God can't use them if you're going to hide his name, my friends. If you're going to hide the association, my friends, with him. Hallelujah. And so, my friends, and so this morning, now it's open up now. Hallelujah. Now, my friends, this is the opportunity to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Has he, this opportunity to be a blessing has been exposed. It, I began to do my friends research and as I look through the scriptures my friends it become clear to me it become clear to me that this was indeed the, the, the pattern the pattern my friends this was indeed the pattern God will take persons per person and detours positive and negatives Negative, positive and negative detours he will do something in their life and turn the situation around he will turn it around. He will use them to benefit folks outside of themselves. Hallelujah. I follow you this morning. God called you to Abraham. Listen to this. God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He said, Abraham, I want you to leave the land of your parents. I want you to leave the land of your parents. I want you to go to the land that I will show you, but I'm not going to tell you about it in advance. Listen to this. I just want you to walk by faith. Walk by faith. He said, I'm going to show you. Now, if you follow Abraham's life, my friends, if you follow Abraham's life, he goes through 25 years of detour, 25 years of detour, 25 years of good and bad and the ugly, the good and the bad and the ugly, and some of the ugly was real ugly. He goes through 25 years of detour, my friends, before God, God, and he, and he are ready to come through before, and he has set things up, and where he has grown up enough, and responsive enough enough for God to do what he is going to do and then God said to Abraham after 25 years I, when I bless you through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed Hallelujah. he says hey I've got a big plan for you but you're not ready for it yet it's going to take 25 years for you to be ready for what I want you to do in your life but when you come around you and grow up and began to respond to me like I want to respond to you I will work through you and when I do my my friends the thing through you it's going to blow your mind it's going to blow your mind because it's going to touch the world God got a world world for you to touch and your world is a little boy when the guitar gave you Jesus my friends sardine and crackers will give a, a mobile dick sandwich for 25,000 people is that awesome because when your destiny is given to Jesus hands when your destiny is given to Jesus hands he is not only going to use it to fill up he is going to use it so you can be a blessing to others give him a hand <laughs> So don't, don't be satisfied.
satisfied this morning to be a blessing alone. Hallelujah. Don't be satisfied because your destiny becomes realized. Your destiny becomes realized when you decide to be a blessing as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shikanama Santo da Bayande. It's not awesome. It's not great and mighty. Hallelujah. How do you know when you're on, on a divine ordained detour this morning? When God has allowed, my friends, your life to go in directions that you don't plan on. Hallelujah. But he has done so, my friends, with good reason this morning. He has done so with good reason. And one of the primary proof of teachers this morning is when God, when God gives you glimpses of his presence. Hallelujah. In the midst of your crisis. Hallelujah. In the midst of your crisis. And when he shows up in unexpected ways through people, through circumstances, through situations. So let to, to let you know he's giving you a wink. He, he, he is in the vicinity even though he, he, he can't change the situation. My friends, look for his presence. Look for his presence in spite of the problem. And my friends, and you will discover, you will discover, my friends, that he is with you even when things doesn't seem to make sense. Hallelujah. You will discover that God is with you. My friends, it has been a joy and great privilege this morning to be here to minister this Sunday morning. It's to be 22nd, the 22nd of May, to minister this word. God bless you richly. You have a wonderful day. I love you in the love of God. All the church folks, I love you very much at church. Do have a wonderful day today at Eccles Assemblies of God Church. God bless you richly. All my loved ones, beloved, do those who are listening to this message, God bless you richly. I love you in the love of God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you richly. Amen.